Hey everyone, this week I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to edit JPEGs using Lightroom and Photoshop. Post-processing is a huge part of the photography workflow these days and we often use RAW files when we're using our editors of choice because they contain the most information, the most dynamic range and we often get the best results out of those. But sometimes you've only got JPEGs to work with. So today I'm going to be looking at how we can get the best out of JPEGs when using Lightroom and Photoshop. I know these videos can often run on a little bit, so I'll stop blabbing on and we'll dive straight in and have a look at the tips. So a little while ago I made a video up in the Peak District at Bamford Edge and the challenge was to get an image straight out of camera in JPEG format without doing any post-processing. I'll put a link up top to that video if you want to go back and watch it. But this is one of the images I captured on that evening. And this is JPEG and as I said we're going to edit it today in Lightroom. And the first thing I'm going to do with this is just bring out a little bit of the shadow detail. Because I was shooting directly into the sun I had to choose whether I was going to expose for the highlights or the shadows and I didn't want to blow out the highlights too much so I exposed for those really and as a consequence the shadows are quite dark. You'll see here there's not a lot of detail down there. So we're going to bring up the shadows. Now we won't get as much detail back as we would with a raw but you see that's not actually too bad. That is bringing a lot more information into the image compared to what we had before. The problem with that now, I'm just going to bring up the dehaze a little bit actually just to bring some richness into those blacks. The problem now is that we've introduced a fair bit of noise even though this was captured at ISO 400 which is not too bad. Raising the shadows up in post will introduce more noise, more noticeable in the darker areas such as these clouds here. So what I'm going to do is come down to the detail palette, which is just here. And if we were shooting in RAW, we would have the option to click this button here that says Denoise. And that would use some clever AI features. It's fairly new, this, to Lightroom. And it would work out the optimal noise reduction without getting rid of too much of the sharpness and clarity. And it does work really well. But because we're in JPEG, we can't do that. And we're going to have to come down to manual noise reduction here. So I'll just draw that down and the first thing I would normally do is remove any colour noise but to be honest this image is pretty good, I don't really see much colour noise and when I'm adjusting that slider it's not really doing much. But if you do get speckly areas of random colour noise it does work really well to just bump up that slider a bit and it'll completely get rid of all that for you. What I'm really going to need to work on is getting rid of the luminance noise. So I bring up this luminance slider here. You see, as I do that, it'll just get softer and softer. But we don't want to go too far because we'll end up with a blurry image. So probably going to go yeah to around about 30. And then if I need to, I can just adjust the detail slider just to bring a little bit of the detail back. But the more detail you bring back, the more that that reduces, or the more that reintroduces noise again so it's a bit of a balancing act but I think that's not too bad now it's definitely looking a lot better than before I've just turned that off that's before just get to a dark area we can see this a bit more clearly so that's before and that's after looking nice and smooth now okay so I've got the image in Photoshop now if I had shot this in RAW I would have had a lot more scope to bring back detail in the blown out white area here. I could probably lower the highlights or the whites and I would get some of the cloud detail coming back into there but because it's JPEG it's a bit more limited and if I drop the whites or the highlights there it would basically just make it duller, a bit more grey but no detail would come back. So the only way I'm going to get that detail back in there is to cheat basically. So what we're going to do, we're just going to make a new layer. So I'm going to come down here to the layers palette, bottom right, click this little square with a plus in it, that'll make a new layer. And then I'm going to click on my clone stamp, which is here on the left in the tool palette. And what I'm going to do is just copy areas of the image into this white area. So if I hold down option on my keyboard, that's option on a Mac, 
it'll be alt on a Windows PC. And I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm using the right square bracket to do that. Left square bracket makes it smaller, right square bracket makes it bigger. Hold down option, click once with my left mouse button. I can release option and now I can just paint that area into the white area. I'm going to do the same from this side, just bring that across until I've roughly filled that white area with some detail. So that's definitely got rid of the white area but it's not looking quite right now because it's like we've got rid of the sun and we do need the sun there. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually just lower the opacity of that layer. So down here in the bottom right, bring the opacity down and we get some of that white shining through again. But we can just still see some faint details in there. So that's with it off, completely bright white and that's with some detail in there. Still looks like we've got a sun, but we're not completely blown out. So I can just save that now, close it, and come back into Lightroom, and we've got the edited image here, which we can now continue to work on. So while we're here back in Lightroom, I'm just gonna demonstrate some color changes using the HSL color palette down here on the right. If I, for example, change the blue color slider, you'll notice that we don't really get a very pronounced change in the sky. If we were editing a RAW file, you would notice that when I move that to the right, the sky would go to a much more purple colour, or a much more turquoise cyan colour, if I come to the left hand side. But with the JPEG, we don't really see much colour change at all. So, what I'm going to do is bring this back into Photoshop, and just demonstrate a way of adding some colour, which is going to be a much more pronounced effect than it would be if you were trying to use the HSL sliders in Lightroom on a JPEG. So what we'll do now that we're here in Photoshop is just come across to the gradient tool here on the left and we just need to choose two colours that are going to create the colour that we want in our sky area. So I'm just going to click on the primary colour option here and I will choose a nice golden yellow I might just pull it across here to the right. Maybe make it a touch more orange. And that'll be okay, I think. And then for my secondary color, I'm gonna choose a nice bluey purple color. Maybe something like that. And with the gradient tool selected, we come up here, drop this menu down, come to basics, and we've got an option here which goes from our primary color to our secondary color. So we'll click on that one. And with this, we can draw a gradient. You see the problem is we've got this the wrong way around though, so I'm just gonna click reverse here. That means we've got purple at the top, fading out into the yellow, I think I might just make that a little bit more orange actually, so I'm just going to come in here, bring that down. That's a little bit better now, I think. Okay, so obviously we can't see our image at the minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down here into the right hand side layers palette, click on this little white square here, and this is a mask layer basically. So we can draw another gradient within this mask area. If I just click this drop down again, I can click on this middle one, which is our primary color fade into nothing. I then need to unclick reverse and just draw a gradient up from the bottom, like so. I can bring that bottom bit up a little bit. And we're starting to get a bit closer now. So I'm just going to click back on the main part of this layer on the left hand side here. That's my gradient. And now I'm just going to change the blend mode of this layer. So you can play around with different ones. I quite like overlay or soft light works quite nicely. I'm going to click on that. It's a little bit too much at the moment. So I'm just going to drop down the opacity a little bit. 
And now that adds just a little bit of vibrancy and colour without being too overbearing. You might find that that's too much. You can obviously just change the colour, the saturation, you can make it less purple. If I just click back on that, I can click on my secondary colour. Just bring it into this area a little bit, make it a little bit less saturated. And that's probably a little bit more realistic looking now. So while I'm here, I'm also just going to get rid of these two lens flares down in the bottom right. So to do that, we'll use the healing brush tool. So that's just here. You can click out the contextual menu and it's the third one down. And this works a little bit like the clone stamp where I can click this area here, for example, and just paint over the flare that I want to get rid of. And that's looking a bit better now. So once again, I'll save this and take it back into Lightroom. So with this back in Lightroom, the only thing I've got left to do now is just put a vignette on this. So I'll come down to the effects palette, just bring that down a little bit. In fact, I'm going to bring that all the way down just so I can see what I'm doing with the midpoint. You see that brings it in just a little bit further. And I'll bring the feather up to the right and then bring back the amount to about there, I think. And then I'll probably just bring up the overall exposure a little bit, just so it's not too dark now it's got the vignette on it. And there we go. So if I go back to the original, let's reset that. That's what it looked like before, as the JPEG out of camera. And that's our new version with the color edits and extra shadow detail, etc. So next up, we'll take a look at this one. This was a sunrise at Winnet's Pass. Again, I'll put the link to the video where I captured this shot. And what we're going to look at this one is combining three different images. It can be three, it can be more, it can be five. It doesn't really matter the amount other than processing power. I'm going to combine three images, and that is to try and get more dynamic range into the image when it's combined than you would have from just one image alone. So obviously you will have had to have captured more than one image in the exact same spot to do this. But you see here I've got this image where we've got the highlights really blown out but a lot of detail in the shadow areas. We've got this one somewhere in the middle and then this one where we've got really black shadows but we've got the highlights more or less exposed. And we're going to combine those three images to create one image which combines all of that range. So I've just highlighted all three of them. You can press shift and click on the first one and the last one, and that will select those three. Then if I right click on that image, I can select photo merge and then HDR. So this is ready to merge those images now and click merge. So I've now got a fourth image, which is a combination of the other three. Uh, quickly, I'll just show you what will happen if I choose this one, for example, and if I try to bring down the highlights, I do get some detail back. But you see, I am at minus 100 there, and I've got no detail up in this area here. It's completely bright white. And similarly, if I chose to edit this area, if I brought up the shadows, I can bring it all the way to plus 100, and I get some detail back, but... There are areas like down here where there's just nothing really. So if we choose the image where we've combined the three together, I can now have a look at that and I've brought detail back in these areas, but also retain the highlights. I've still got detail up here and I can probably even bring a bit more detail back in the shadows by just bringing a linear gradient up there, bringing up the shadows a bit there. So it's a really good way of increasing the dynamic range in an image if you have got more than one shot that you can combine with different exposure settings. It is a good way of getting the most out of a JPEG or a set of JPEG images. And finally we'll take a look at this image. So JPEG is a lossy format 
that means that the more that you save it and resave it, the more quality it's going to lose. And that's because a JPEG is optimized for file size and things like that. So it does a lot of compression on the image, which reduces quality slightly. And once you do one compression, you're probably not going to really notice a big difference. But the more you keep compressing that same file, it just reduces the quality more and more until you end up with, in the case of this image, some really pronounced banding in the sky. You see here, we've got these bands. So we're going to look at how we can reduce that banding using Photoshop. So I'll bring it into Photoshop again, Command and E or Control and E on your keyboard. And what we really need to do is separate this tree and the bottom half of the image from the sky. So what I'm going to do is use the object selection tool. So I'll click the contextual menu on this little tool here, pop this menu out and click that. And then I can hover over the tree, tell it to select that, click shift on my keyboard and it'll also select that area there. I've got a couple of little extra bits to add so I'll use the lasso tool, hold shift and that'll add to the selection. Just draw around all those areas there and these bits. And what I'm going to do now is just save this selection so that I can use it again later. So I'm going to come up to select, down to save selection and I'll call that tree. Now I'm going to invert the selection. So to do this I'm pressing command shift and I on my keyboard. That would be control shift and I on a Windows PC. And now we've got all the sky selected and not the tree or the bottom half of the image. So I'm going to bring this, the sky that is, onto a new layer by pressing Command and J, Control and J if you're on a PC. And you see now if I hide the bottom layer, we've got one layer with just the sky area here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is click back onto our background layer. I'm going to load the selection that I saved before. So come down to load selection, tree, click OK, and we've got that selection back. And now I'm going to bring that onto a new layer as well. So if I hide those two layers, you see we've got one layer with this, one layer with that, and then we've got this background layer. And to get rid of the banding in the sky, I'm going to click on this layer here, the top layer with the sky, and I'm going to come to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. So we can play around with the slider here just to raise the amount of blur. You see, I don't know if you can see how much that's taking effect at the moment, but we'll have a look at the layers to compare in a moment. I'm going to bring it to around about six and click OK. And I'm just going to bring layer two above layer one. And you see when I zoom in, we've got nice smooth sky. If I hide that layer, you see we get that banding back now. So that's the blurred layer, that's the previous layer. And that's a really good quick way of getting rid of banding in your low resolution JPEGs. So I would encourage you to use RAW format wherever possible. But when it's not, or when you've only got a JPEG to work with, I hope these tips have been useful to get the best out of those. If it has, or you've enjoyed the video in any way, please just give me a thumbs up down below. That really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, gets the video spread a little bit more widely, and then hopefully more people can benefit from these tips as well. I really do appreciate you tuning in and watching these videos. I say that every week, but I do mean it every week. And if you are new to the channel, and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can also click down there on the big red button, or over here on this picture of me. And that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week, there's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.